Welcome to your Wild Wednesday. We are in a small patch of woods, privately owned, where I have permission to lurk about, hunt mushrooms from the landowner. More to the point, if you aren't familiar with Wild Wednesdays, the idea is to go somewhere people don't often go and hopefully run into something people don't often run into. As you can see, this patch of woods is almost entirely untended, meaning it doesn't get a lot of human interaction. I'm following a, an animal trail here. <clears throat> the hope is to run into anything far out of the normal counting all creatures from cryptids like big feet, chupacabras, whatever the Jersey Devil is considered to be, although we're nowhere near uh, the Pine Barrens. We're in northwest Missouri. And what we're looking for includes all of those creatures to, to uh, even mythical creatures such as satyrs, nymphs, unicorns, goblins, trolls, elves, gnomes, etc. The list goes on. You get the idea. For the first half of the Wild Wednesday, I'll be recording with this camera right here on my head. And for the second half, I'll shut off the camera to entertain the possibility that the kinds of creatures we're dealing with have some sort of ability to avoid being recorded in some way. After that second half without recording, I'll pick back up and let all of you know if I saw anything unusual, anything strange or out of the ordinary. You'll have only my word to go on, but hopefully that will be enough. And during that second half, if I find anything stand out, there's a good chance I'll flick the camera back on to catch it. And you might notice that this is a particular season for these triangle-backed spiders to lace webs in between trees to keep the camera from literally getting covered in spider web as I walk. Uh, I'll be using this stick in front of me. So if you see this snowman's arm reaching out every so often, sadly interrupting spiders work uh, don't worry, it's just just to clear the path so the camera doesn't get completely obscured. Where I can, though, I'll avoid disrupting the poor spiders. And you might notice I'm, I'm moving a little slower than normal because being shortly after the eclipse we had a large amount of rain and that results in a large amount of mushrooms. Which I am a fan of the edible type especially non-psychedelic since I've never actually managed to find any wild psychedelic mushrooms here in northwest Missouri. The psilocybes aren't a common thing here. At least the type from down by the gulf.
But as you can see, the mushrooms are in full swing after this late summer, early fall rain season. Ah, there you can see a not too old tree stand. Deer hunting comprising the majority of activity in the woods in Missouri by my experience, my estimate. I very rarely run into a person hiking, geocaching, that sort of thing. Much, much more often run into deer stands. Very rarely see this where there's a rope attached that goes all the way up to the deer stand. Uh, the gun safety course taught by the conservation department in the state of Missouri strongly recommends that you don't climb the ladder with your gun, suggesting it's much more safety to safe to tie your gun to a pull rope, a, a a tow rope of some sort, any kind of system to pull your gun up to you after you get safely to the top of your tree stand. In fact, if I remember correctly, when I took the gun safety course, um, they stressed that I think the only fatality related to a hunting incident that they had had so far that year was actually a, a man falling out of his tree stand to his death. In fact, it might actually seem almost comical, but a large portion of the course was all about uh, navigating through a cumbersome wooded natural area without accidentally shooting yourself. Uh, a portion of the class was even to practice going over a fence, an old fence, as is, if you watch these Wild Wednesdays, you know it's incredibly common for, for me to be walking through the woods in an area nobody's been forever and come across uh, really old metal fencing, usually uh, square fencing with a barbed wire row at the top or sometimes three rows of barbed wire. And so they constructed a mock fence in the in the classroom where they were uh, teaching us and had us hold a dummy gun and climb over the fence uh, the proper way, which is to slide your gun on the ground under the fence and then either go under the fence or over the fence, but absolutely never cross the fence while holding your weapon, your gun. Due to the number of incidents they've had reported uh, occur by someone trying to cross a fence with their gun and they, they accidentally drop it or trigger it and shoot themselves. As crazy as that might sound.
as you can see, this web, the spider isn't even present, but uh, it's enough leftovers that we still need to clear the path. I almost thought this was a puffball, but it's just a, a mushroom that's displaying some sort of white fungus growth, white fungal growth on top. For reference, a completely normal walnut. Some frog activity on the bank there. Somewhat circling back here to find a better place to cross the creek. Damn it, spiders. Still seems impossible to catch every web. The way this does circle, though, creates a bit of an island up here that I'm curious curious about.
Hmm. It appears something lives in that hole up there. It's a bit of a rose bush guarding it. Maybe I can get around to it from up top. Well, I can't see anyone inside, but it is very evident that something sleeps there often enough, or did recently. It's a nice day out. It's no surprise they aren't home after a fair amount of rain. They're probably inside during that rain and then hungry once it ends. Bit of a rose briar beside me. That part isn't navigable. But often does have cottontail rabbits dashing in and out of it. A wild grape tripping me up there, or some type of moon seed vine, I believe. Hmm, this might be a passable point. Clearly animals do use it. The frogs once again terrified of me. An easy tip for when you are jumping, 
across a creek bank or such, try to aim for somewhere that you see a lot of rock as opposed to somewhere you don't see any rock. I can show you just easily that standing here I sink quite a bit standing in the rock nowhere near as much. Might seem like a no-brainer but hey. Worth mentioning. And as you can see the mushrooms are everywhere today. Here we are. If you can't see that, there's a, beside these wild raspberries, I believe there's a, an animal trail going up here. Which aren't always perfect to use, but usually they're better than not using one due to the animals kind of packing it down over time. Repeated use. Oh, this is interesting. These aren't incredibly common. You see that? Looks like something from Gremlins 2 fruit down there. Forget their name. I think one of the common names is Red Dragon something. Please, spiders, give me a break. Cut me some slack here. Every single pathway. You can see what looks like here. Almost like tire tracks. Too evenly spaced to be a pair of animal trails and the vegetation is somewhat cut down. Most likely the path someone uses to get as close as possible to their deer stand. Or there is some chance that it was just a local youth testing the limits of their ATV. As you can see here, lots of turkey tails. Another type of fungus. Definitely tire tracks and not from an ATV. The track is too thick. You can see something more like a small bobcat, but it's clearly been a while given that log there being partially in the track.
curious to see where it goes. It's entirely possible that wherever it does go, like you can see the trees here with these brown leaves, these likely aren't felled too long ago, most likely this year. And there are certain mushrooms that grow from young, dead branches. These are oak. You can see that it even had acorns developed, so this wasn't too long ago. You can see these cut down not too long ago. So for some reason they wanted to clear out these large oaks. I can't personally say why. Animals don't seem to mind it. The trails are still cutting through over there. There's scat there. All the spider webs are still just as prolific here as the rest of the wood line. But it seems to be something the poison ivy is enjoying, the extra sunlight breaking in. More mushrooms, a feels like a bull eat of some kind. The rust-topped bull eat mushrooms, uh, there are several that appear that way. And instead of picking them and taking them home for identification to see if it's an edible one, I'm just going to leave the red-topped bull eats. Likely a branch clipped from a squirrel running through there. Ah, well, that explains some of the reasoning for cutting this out. There's another deer stand here. Perhaps we can use their mowed through trail here to cut back in at another point. No spider webs for a brief moment.
And you can see another deer stand, an enclosed stand up there. Well, it actually, it looks like a tree stand behind an enclosed raised stand, like basically a wooden box on legs. A lot more clearing of trees, again mostly oak, it appears. Ah, and there is some large oak logs. It's possible that uh, whoever cut them down might intend to use some of it for heat burning the oak in the winter, cutting it now, letting it age a bit. Fresh cut trees, even in the winter, have a tendency not to burn near as well as aged wood. Well, this is interesting. I remember this pond from other times I've been here. But now I'm certain that the clearing was all done earlier this year because I did come to this pond, not to fish or anything like that, but briefly. Just for the purpose of exploration, I, I was around this pond earlier this year. You might not know what I mean yet by pond, since there is no pond visible, but I'll get closer. Ah, some of the trees they cut down here are clearly Osage Orange, like this one in front of us. You can see the wood here with that distinct orange color. Thank you, Spider, for being up there instead of down here.
likely a frog, a big one. Nothing in there. Hmm. Well, aside from some of the clearing around it, uh, just the same as I remember. Sorry about that. Almost nicked the camera. I'll never get used to the whole unicorn horn of a camera coming off of my head. Yet another, not as elaborate, older deer stand there in front of what is clearly a large old oak that was cut. I think likely that all of the clearing was done simply to uh, promote better deer hunting. Well, that's the hope at least. I think they're hoping that it'll make things more clear. Obviously, whatever they came through with to clear their path, uh, they did the cutting afterwards. You might think <clears throat> coming through here and clearing this would be good for the mushrooms. You can see the soil more clearly. A lot of the undergrowth is uh, pulled or cut out of the way. And like this, you can see this large mushroom here. But I would theorize, as you notice, that's seemingly the Only one. I would theorize that it's not as good as you might suspect for the mushrooms since it's possible for when a plant is torn up through here, like in this particular area where you can see there's nothing sticking up out of the ground as opposed to right here where this is still sticking up. So here, everything was tore all the way out pretty much except for deep roots. Plants like this perhaps made it. But when those deep roots, uh, when the plants are totally pulled up and out, uh, likely results in damage to the mycelium under the ground. I would suspect. Which is why we don't really see more of the mushrooms growing in the path. Some off to the side. I think actually that's a second of the same type. but uh, not in the track. 
not in the areas where the bucket, I believe, uh, on the front of this vehicle was uh, put down a little low. Took up too much of the dirt and soil. I seem to remember the better path to get from the pond being around where this tree is. something. Eating a lot of, I think, gooseberries. Trying to go around the spider webs is just near impossible. Sometimes it's hard for me to tell actually if it's a gnat buzzing around the camera <clears throat> or if I've accidentally caught a hitchhiking spider. So pardon my frequent brushing of the camera. Interesting, in theory, perhaps there are some legends of activity swelling around a location that has been left alone for a long period of time and then dramatically disturbed. Perhaps, I mean, we can only hope we run into 
something like that. Hey. Oh, quit. Clap. Clap your hands. Okay, sorry. Well, I think we've escaped the area of the work of the owner, but <clears throat> as you can see, there was some kind of damage to a walnut tree here earlier in the year. A few of its branches seem to have snapped higher up on the tree, though, than any person with a small dozer or bobcat would have done. <laughs> a large elderberry reaching out to dangle and drop berries into the creek. Excellent strategy, elderberry. If you look closely, Right there is the noise you just heard. Oh, they don't like me. I'm sorry, we'll leave you alone. I hope that still looks normal. Well, I don't see an excellent place to cross, but a uh, place to cross, so let's give it a shot. I do see, you notice the difference between how this looks sandy and that doesn't over there on the right side of the bank? It almost looks hard textured, flat, smooth, almost like stone, and this looks almost like sand because it pretty much is sand. 
you can see animal prints going along. Whereas over here, if I try to write something, you'll notice it doesn't go nearly as deep. That's because uh, this particular part of the creek is clay heavy. That's me pushing very, very, very hard into the clay. And you can see it, it actually makes just that, that one little hole. If I try to drag the stick through it, the stick would easily break. Whereas here, well, okay, the stick did break when I stabbed it, but you get the idea. The sand, as opposed to the clay, holds animals' prints, shows you what has or hasn't been there recently. So if you're looking for evidence of something, if you're trying to follow a creek line in hopes of uh, tracking something down, look for sandier sides of the bank as opposed to the clay heavy sides. Unless you're trying to gather clay, maybe for crafting effigies or something like that. In which case, there's plenty. Often chunks of it breaking off in what appear to be rocks, but you'll notice their edges are a little more rounded. And they're just chunks of clay that have been broken off into the sandier bank. Ah, maybe we can go up here and around to that tree across there. Maybe get a longer stick. Now another tip is, well I did say earlier that the sand, if you're crossing and jumping down, it doesn't hold as well, you'll sink more. Be careful trying to go up a bank when there's a lot of clay, it's uh, terribly slick and slippery at times. Even here, spider, really? Now I'm almost doubting my ability to get over there to the tree. At least, easily. Part of the problem is that everything beside me is a plant with thorns, pretty much. Well, we're okay.
One of my favorite parts of hiking when I get the chance is to finding a log that crosses a creek. As you can see, some of the elderberries are ripe. Pretty much all plant to the parts of the plant, aside from the berries being non-edible by most accounts. The berries are used to make jams, syrups, wine, basically all the favorites that berries are typically used to produce. They taste awful plain in my humble opinion and most people don't consume the seeds But you can crush them against the roof of your mouth with your tongue, for example, and each berry has a small amount of juice to offer. Oh, okay. That uh, branch somehow locked behind the underside of the camera. What are you doing? Well, have fun with that. Obviously, we've made our way back to some of the oak tree clearing. Yeah, I don't see the oak's main trunks, like that one that was laid out in the field and cut up. So I do think it's likely that they were coming through cutting down some of the largest oaks <clears throat> for firewood and thinning the woods. In a way, giving a lot more of the younger trees a way to come up. It is possible they were just clearing the large oaks from their path, but at this point, I don't think so. And I do not speak with the landowner regularly enough to tell you their plans. Damn it. Come on, spiders.
you can see here an old Osage orange tree by an old fence post. Which suggests that this land was at one time completely free of trees uh, for the vast most part and used as a pasture of some sort some kind of livestock most likely most likely cattle but that should give you some idea of how long ago that was by looking at the age of these trees many of the trees here barring those large oaks since those could are you know they're sparring sparse enough they could have been here the whole time um, but this Osage orange likely like very likely planted uh, after those posts were put in so I think even a safe assumption would be that the home that used to be here when that fence was used is long gone for more than 50 years. Likely, I would actually say more than 70. You can see that they're not far off with their idea of using this for deer hunting. This is a, a fairly excellent deer track, and not a small one either. Just to make sure you get a good view of that. Oh, it looks like they've left their tractor actually parked near here. Well, 
which to some, <clears throat> excuse me, might seem strange, but uh, it's actually very, very common to leave a tractor parked in the area just outdoors uh, in rural areas for very long periods of time. eating. Oh, I'm going to give you a quick look at the surroundings here before I cut you off and then I'll continue for about another hour pick back up and update you on anything I've seen in that hour see you soon that's it for your wild Wednesday I came back out on this gravel road closer to the creek down there walked up a little bit ways further uh, nothing strange, unusual, nothing paranormal or supernatural noticed, no uh, unrecognizable creatures, just some cool plants and fungi. But regardless of that, if you dig this sort of thing, uh, if you do like it, like the video, there will be a subscribe button in the corner, and if you leave me any suggestions or critiques, toss those in the comment section below, and I'll definitely check them out. Thanks, see you next time.